Uh, so yeah, my name is Bryce Hallett, and I'm a freelance animator. And by freelance, I mean I work at home all the time in my pajamas. So I hope you appreciate I got dressed up for you folks. I'm, I'm wearing pants. So I'm not used to it. Originally, I thought, like, oh, it'd be great if I could just come in and I'll come in my work uniform and just like tear away and just had like a nice, um, you know, pajama, business pajamas, because, you know, I can distinguish from sleeping pajamas, business pajamas, and like, so I could be comfortable, but I'm not that as prepared. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, I wasn't sure exactly what stories to tell either, like some other people expressed, so I thought maybe I would just go where it started, how I started into uh, freelance, and it was by accident. Um, I graduated from Sheridan at the turn of the last century, um, back when we were still drawing on paper and there were no computers in sight. And you know, at the end of the year, like at that point, Sheridan was experienced. Not even beige ones, none. We, we drew on paper and we had a giant Oxbury camera stand with gears and you shot on it and you, you blackmailed a friend to come and turn the gears for you because if you lost track of which cell went on and which gear turned in, you had to start the whole thing over again and that'd be like nine hours of your life. Yes, you had to shoot film, uh, use film for your pencil tests, and then you'd wait for several days to get delivered, and then you had to pay the money to get the film, so you literally had to pay someone so you could hand in your homework. And that was like lining up the day before to book the time. Yes, all these fun things. That is what it was like back then. So those of you using computers right now, you don't know how good you have it. So at the end of the year, when people all the expectations were high on you know, showing these short films, and we had industry people and people hoping they'd get hired right away. Our teachers were like, hey, you know, just settle down a bit. Don't put too much pressure on it. A lot of you might find you might not work right away, or you might work for a little bit, and then you have to deliver pizzas. And I was thinking, oh no, I don't know how to deliver pizzas. <laughs> I was really counting on this job. <laughs> so I was sort of sitting in my basement apartment in Oakville going, I don't know what to do, and just finished coloring the film because I was submitting it to Ottawa, and then I got a call and I was like, hey, one of our writers at our show saw your film and we'd like to bring you in for an interview. I'm like, great, what show is this? And they're like, it's for the Red Green Show. And I'd heard of that show, and I don't know if you're not familiar with it, it's a live action sketch comedy show with some guys in plaid who build a lot of things out of duct tape. There is no animation on this show. So I did not know what I was going to be interviewed for. So I asked the woman, because I figured you, know, you should be prepared. Uh, and it's like, what is this? Okay, so there's a character on the show called Ranger Gordon. He's a forest ranger, and he's been in the woods for a long time, so he's gone nuts because he's by himself. I'm like, huh, this would be, I didn't know it then, but it seems to be like foreboding of my future career. <laughs> <laughs> so he's alone by himself in the woods all day working on these little projects by himself, little educational films that, are, that he'll show to the other lodge members. I'm like, okay, so they're handcrafted or whatever. So I, got an idea from that, and I was like, oh, you know, when I was in high school, I made my own little films too. Maybe I'll bring one of those along. And so I got there, and there was six other guys from my class who were all super talented and like way better draftsmen than me, because again, we had no computers at school, so all you did was learn how to draw. And so at the end of the three years, there were some really amazing artists there, and me who didn't do too badly. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, so a little competition. I was the last person to get interviewed, and he's like, you know, he's a funny guy, uh, Steve Smith. I'm like, hi, welcome. He doesn't talk like that, but I always think of him as the way he, <laughs> on the show. I'm like, hi, Bryce. Hey, look, I got these new chairs. Hey, look, they got the levers. You can go up and down. I'm like, oh, Bryce, you're hired. Bryce, you're fired. He's like, <laughs> <sighs> That's how it started. And so I showed him my film, and I was happy because it got a good reaction in our screening. Uh, you know, and, and nothing, just dead silence. Like, oh, okay. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, and it was more or less a pencil test. A lot of us didn't get finished films on, uh, in color because cells is expensive and time consuming. So it was just like a pencil test in the whole film. And he's like, you know, we couldn't actually show this like that on television, right? And it's gotta be better. I'm like, yeah, I know, I had to. And I was like, okay. Um, but if you were gonna get done, like how would you go about finishing it? So you know, one of the other guys we interviewed suggested like cell coloring. And in my head I thought, oh my God, you couldn't paint cells and finish, like I should back up. Their show was already in production, and it was June, and their show was starting to air in September, and they wanted someone, they were hiring someone to do four animated shorts to stick into the show. And so all I could think was my basement apartment covered in cells of paint trying to dry, and like, no, that was insane, you would never do that. So that's what I was thinking in my head. And out loud I was saying, God, no, you will never do that, that's insane. Why would you do that? And so I said, like, do you have Photoshop? 
Um, and I was surprised no one else suggested it, but then I remember there's no computers at school, but I had gone to another college before Sheridan where I learned Photoshop. Photoshop 3, the cutting edge of what was at the time. And by the time I'd graduated, surely it might have been up to five or seven by then, but I couldn't afford it, so I had Photoshop 3. Its new features were it had layers and it was in color. <laughs> So he seemed impressed that I might know how to do this on a budget and get it done in time. And so he gave me these uh, uh, cast photos. Like, here, I'm try doing some caricatures of these guys. You know, we were thinking some, like, you know, like Beavis and Butthead or something like that. And I was like, oh, it's ugly. And I just graduated learning to draw well for three years. <laughs> I, so I was like, all right. I didn't question it. So I got outside and I was talking to my friends. And we were, you know, one of them offered me a ride because I guess they all come together in a car. And I was like, oh, it's exciting. Yeah, we could start soon, blah, blah, blah. And as I'm listening to them talk and get excited, I realize nobody else got a cast photo to make caricatures. I was like, am I the only one? I was like, maybe I'm the only one who got hired. But I don't want to mention this or bring it up because they're giving me a ride home. <laughs> And so I just keep it to myself. And then even I don't even know that I've actually gotten hired for like three weeks because they don't talk to me or contact or anything. So I'm just kind of doodling. And eventually, like, they get a hold of me and I have a meeting with them. And I find out, like, oh, I am hired. Um, <laughs> and then they still hadn't really written the scripts or had any idea what they wanted. And I just showed them some rough designs I did uh, and eventually figured out. And they were, asking me, they were asking me how we could go about making this cartoon. And I was thinking, but it's your show. You guys are the ones who have, like, at this point, 10 years of experience making this show. And they would go on for another, like, 15 years total. I worked on five years of the show and then the two more without me. So that's in the future. But <laughs> so I was like, oh, my god. They're not hiring me for their animation. I'm the animation department. i just out of school, and I'm telling them how to make a cartoon for their show. And I'm making it up as I go, much like tonight. So it all kind of plays around. It's so like, OK, so, but I'm all my all my uh, training is in school, and school is very specific. Like, when you're in the industry and they want 30 seconds for commercial, it's got to be exactly 30 seconds. And if you're doing two minutes, it's exactly two minutes. And they're very precise and polite and all these things. And you do storyboard this way, and it's a very formal thing and formal presentation. So I had all that. So my next meeting, I wanted to impress them. And I'm like, yes, all right. I grabbed all the scripts. I looked at them all. And I figured out a plan to do this in a way. And we could shoot on fours, which meant nothing to him, because they don't know anything about animation. <laughs> and I showed him my storyboards. They're very meticulous in a binder, even. And he went, yeah, all right. So I, OK, then. <laughs> My next three storyboards were stick men, because I was the only one who's going to see them. And then we went into this room, and I met the actor, Peter Callahan, who played Ranger Gord on the show. And since he was, his character was making these cartoons, he was going to voice the cartoons. I'm like, that's awesome. And then Steve left the room. And I was there with the sound guy, uh, Roberto Capretto, and, and Peter Callahan. And he was just, you know, reading the lines, and it was funny, and I was laughing my head off. And Roberto, at one point, you know, like, turns to me and is like, all right, so which take did you want? I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing something. <laughs> Mostly my job, and I've learned, is just, you know, just shut up. Just let them do the thing. But if you had a good note, give it and be clear. Don't do, hey, Rob, can you just ask Peter if he could just make a friend? <laughs> it's like, what? You know, if you could just get him to friend. Why don't you tell him? It's like, oh, hi, Peter. Can you? <laughs> I was thinking you have two girls in this script. There's two women in this one script where it's called Cloud Makers that you find out at the end of the rainbow they make clouds and blah, blah, blah. And I just had this funny idea of like, could you just do one of them French Canadian? <laughs> so it's him doing all the voices, like, all right, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, Ranger God, how are you today? We are so impressed. You're Ranger. And it was the funniest thing. I laughed my head off. So this is great. I'm directing. And he took the direction because I did it properly, not mumbling under, under my breath. Uh, and then I went home, and you know, a, a few days later, uh, Roberto had because Peter just basically did all the voices like all in one shot, and then Roberto kind of cut and pasted them all together to like, fit the script. Uh, and I took it home, and I worked on it, and I got my friend Curtis to come help me because there was only a budget for one person, and Curtis thankfully had a job, it was some time off, and so he would just offered to help me, which was great. Um, and so we worked our butts off, but it was like, again, uh, four short cartoons that are two and a half to three minutes long, <laughs> and they do from September, it's July now. <laughs> <laughs> and so we did a lot of all-nighters. Um, Curtis would you know, work at his job, and then he'd come to my place, and he had a laptop, and I'd be drawn away like crazy. And again, it was still on paper, but we were scanning in, coloring on Photoshop. And so I taught Curtis how to use Photoshop, because I learned it in my old school. The one advantage I had on the much better draftsmen who weren't hired. Um, but we put so many hours in it. I literally watched Curse one day. He would just put a ball game on. And he would just be coloring cells and coloring cells and coloring cells and coloring cells and cells. 
And then 88 hours later, just got back up and started calling. He didn't move from the couch. He fell asleep in place. Like that. <laughs> Working on this thing. And I was like, oh my god. And we eventually got them all done. Uh, and I got to show them in front of a live studio audience, which was great. And I got my parents to come. And they were very impressed to meet actors and see the Red Green Show, because they knew what that was. And they didn't know what I did. <laughs> and to this day, they still don't know what I do, because I've now, you know, I've worked on that show and with other people and sketch comedy things and commercials and documentaries and have clients in Germany and blah, blah, blah. And a few months ago, my mom found a clipping of the Toronto Star and she called me up and said, hey, I was thinking maybe you'd be interested. I think there's a job that's, that would be great for you. Um, at Medieval Times, they're apparently, the king is retired and they're auditioning for new kings. I think, I think you should go on audition. So. You know, it really doesn't matter how successful you get to be in life or that you're no longer starving or that you have stuff on TV. <laughs> on a show that's shown across Canada and the US, your mom is still not going to be that impressed. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's my story.